Your story, for those that don't know, just tell me your family background so we know where we are with that. Explain Of course. That. Well, I come from a very musical family from East Tennessee, a lot of mountain people and a lot of mountain music. And you guys will know my aunt, who is Dolly Parton. And I'm so grateful for that. So she is every bit as magical in my mind as she is to all of you guys. I've met Dolly. And I, just, <laughs> I bet she I loved, loved you her. too. Well, we just got a really well. I of loved her she because did. she was, again, hard worker. I think mm -hmm. that's one of the appeals. Um, we know that she puts a lot of effort into everything yes. she does. And I like the fact that she's been able to transcend decades. You know, people, because I first knew her, I think most people in England knew her for Jolene. Okay. And I, but I was just enamoured with the big hair and the glamour and the, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I thought, of course. who's this dynamite? She looks like glamour. a Barbie doll. Yeah. Just fabulous, you know? And then you go through Ireland in the stream and all that sort of stuff, and you think, this woman is really talented. But she's kind of done this thing, Jada, where, and, and it's interesting with your story, you said that you were a late bloomer. Yes. And, and your aunt sort of plays down her talent. And I thought, is that a family trait? Because you're saying, oh, I wasn't brave enough to get up there and I didn't want to present my lyrics or whatever. And I, that's what I really was interested in your story. I thought, <laughs> but coming from that family, surely you must want to wave flags. And then you think, oh. maybe not. Well, you know. I'll tell you, we have two main careers that happen in our family, three. Two are creative. One is my grandfather, my papa, her dad, a lot of my older uncles that were born first, they are construction workers. Oh. The uncles went to the military. They're hard blue collar men. Yeah. Um, and then we have either performers and singers and writers or preachers and um, not not like a proper, like in a, but traveling yeah. preachers. My grandfather, my great grandfather, her grandfather, would walk alone three days across the Smoky Mountains from North Carolina to Tennessee to teach music to children oh, wow. and to teach them the Bible. Um, there was no real denomination to what they did. It was just... This is it. Yes. And so I think those are both forms of bringing comfort yeah. and peace yeah. to people. So that's just what we've always done. But there is a humility that we've all been taught that that is not, you've been given that yeah. as a gift and you've been given that as something that now you have to, it is your responsibility to share that responsibly with people. Well, it's interesting yeah. because, of course, Dolly recently did the um, reading program oh. over here. And, you know, like everything, really, you get a negative and a whatever. Sure. You know? But I just thought, what a lovely thing. She didn't need to do it. No. You know, but she did it. Well, and so she, you think, well, why not? Well, you sure. Know? And she says that it was so important to her because her father couldn't read. He was illiterate. Yeah. He just never got an education because he lived in a holler, what we call a holler, yeah. out in the mountains. There's no access to those yeah. things. And although he was one of the smartest man, men I have ever met in my life. You find that, though, don't he you? He just couldn't read. And just so for her, stuff. that's her way of staying connected to him, yeah. even though he's gone, yeah. and to teach all these other people how to do that. And I think that's so special. It's always important to her to take care of children. You know, for years, uh, in Sevierville, her hometown, every kid that graduated the high school, she would send them to a community college or the local college oh. just to give them a chance. Because yeah. sometimes people... She was given a chance yeah. in a time when a lot of people were not. Yeah, yeah. And she wants to try her best to give that to other people as well because there are so many talented, genius people that are probably better than anything we've ever heard yeah. that we may never get to see because they don't have the opportunity or confidence, to, inner confidence, or confidence as well. to come out. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot about that, isn't it? And I want to bring you back to that because you were saying about your being a late starter, late bloomer, and then. It was suggested you would go to work at Dollywood. I did. Now, to me, I think that's fabulous in itself <laughs> because two things, really. You learn your craft. It's hard work, yes. but mistakes are left there and Absolutely. you just keep carrying on, you know? Absolutely. And I love what you, you said in your story about, well, you know, um, they thought it'd be kind of good to build my confidence, and it, it obviously has. But what was your first experience there? When you, when you first went there, did you think, I'm not sure? What, what was the turning point where you thought, actually, I could do this now, or you know what I mean? I'll tell you exactly what happened. So I had my son, and he was right about two years old at the time, and I had taken that time off to mom. To be You know, mom. to be mom, yeah. get him started. To, I made the baby food all the time. <laughs> <laughs> 
after that, I was planning, I went to college to, um, I have an associate's in psychology. I was going to continue because I wanted to be a um, psychiatrist that worked, <laughs> that worked in prisons and things like that. Like, it was just something I was really passionate about. And she messaged me because I had told her, I said, I'm, I think, she said, what have you been doing? I said, I think I'm going to go back to school and get my bachelor's and work my way up. And she said, before you do that, I have an opportunity for you. I said, okay. And she said, I heard that you like to write. No one knew that I did that. I did not do music or I wrote my whole life. Yeah. That was private for me and my husband on the couch, yeah. you know, that stuff. She said, well, I heard from a little bird that you like to write and sing. And we have put together a new family show at the park that I would love you to be part of. And how on earth could you say no to her, yeah. you know? And so I- You must I, have been nervous though, Jimmy, Oh, so I'd never done that. I was terrified. I mean? yeah, like, oh. I'll tell you that it, <laughs> it was the same year that uh, the season of Track Race with Jinx Monsoon came out. <laughs> I really attached to her because she also was nervous, but dropped it. And so she would say, water off a duck's back, water off yeah. a duck's back. So that whole first year, before every single show, four shows a day, water off a duck's back. Yeah. Um, now, the, but my first week of performing at the park, very first week, after every single show, we would get to talk to people. You have meet and greet. Yeah. And I'd be having these very incredibly deep conversations with strangers who, being on stage, somehow gave me some type of, they trusted me. Yeah. And they would tell me these stories about themselves. They it's would tell me- It's terrible for a songwriter though, isn't oh, it? Oh, isn't it just awful? Yeah, just, um, oh, oh that's cool. no. <laughs> <laughs> but they would tell me how much, imagine hearing someone come up to you and say, your family yeah. means so much to me. Yeah. And I realized after that first week, and I told her, I said, you know, at Granny, we call her, I call her Aunt Granny. Yeah. I said, it's kind of like, I'm still getting to counsel people. And she went, I know. Yeah. She knew yeah. that that was right for me, even when I didn't. 